Welcome to VSP News from Coleman's Corner. I am your host, David A. Coleman, editor of Fleet Maintenance Magazine, the only publication that is all maintenance, all management, all vehicle classes, all the time. You know, nowadays, more and more loads are being placed on a vehicle's electrical system, and that is creating some challenges, especially with power management. To learn more about this, I visited with James Becker. He is Vice President of Technology at CE Niehoff, a company involved in the design and manufacture of charging and power management systems. Well, what's happening these days with uh, electric power in vehicles, trucks, buses, cars, any, anything uh, in the vehicle industry, there's more and more electrical loads being prescribed for the, for the, in the automotive market. When you increase the electrical loads, obviously you need more batteries, more generator or alternator to provide the power that's needed. And what we've done is in the marketplace is catch up little by little. We've uh, added batteries, we've uh, gotten the bigger alternators, but the power management and the charging those batteries has not been consistently addressed. And as you add more batteries, you need a bigger alternator. And as you get a bigger alternator and the higher current in the wires and the cables between the alternator and the batteries, you've also got a situation of voltage drop because the higher the current, the wires, cables are resistive. So the higher the current, the more the voltage drop. And as the voltage drop increases, the voltage at the battery terminals is less. So you're not charging them up as quickly to the uh, prescribed uh, charge level that the batteries need at the terminal voltage. The situation becomes compounded as equipment and accessories are added to a vehicle. Now, as you add accessories like uh, Lift gates, they have additional batteries, typically two batteries, way back in the trailer that need to be charged, or in a box truck, way back in a box truck with long cables between the alternator and those batteries. Or you've got uh, the no idle air conditioning systems, and those got their own set of batteries, again, typically about four batteries in a set. And when those get depleted, they need a lot of current to recharge them, and that current, the higher the current, the more the voltage drop, and all this slows down the rate at which the batteries get recharged, and they also mean they get charged to a lower level. They never really get their full charge back. So, what has the industry been doing about this? We've been moving to remote sensing of, of the voltage at the battery terminals. This gives us much more accurate uh, charging uh, uh, signal for charging the batteries at the batteries rather than at the alternator output, which is what's been done in the past. So by getting a, a signal from the battery terminals, we, the regulator knows exactly what the battery terminals are doing and it can adjust its voltage to, so that the output of the alternator is what it needs to be typically about within a volt of the normal regulated setting to match what the temperature terminals are doing and what the what the battery needs to get full charge, so to compensate for the line drop. Baker explained how temperature affects battery charging. The relationship between battery charging and temperature is that when the temperatures are colder, you want to have a higher charge voltage on the batteries because the battery efficiency and its uh, charge characteristics change with temperature. On the other hand, when you have a very hot day, and this is very important for the anti-idling air conditioners, you don't want to charge the batteries at a high, uh, at the higher voltage because they're going to get overcharged and you're going to shorten the life of the batteries. So when you're dealing with uh, high temperatures, you want to lower the normal uh, battery terminal voltage. So when you have remote sensing, it's also important to include temperature compensation. With, that's a characteristic for what the battery manufacturer wants to see at the temperature terminals uh, charge voltage at the various temperatures. Another element that comes into play with battery charging is the alternator. With all the additional batteries, these auxiliary batteries, remember that a typical truck cab has uh, four batteries. You add the lift gate, you got two more, that's six batteries. If you have anti-idling uh, air conditioning, you've got a four battery set. 
So you're talking about eight batteries that need to be charged up or kept at top charge. To charge that, you need capacity. You need big alternators. There's just no way around it because all that charge is, is electrical energy and el energy is power times time. And if you don't have the power, it's gonna take a long time to charge them. But if you've got the power, then it's, uh, they charge up in less time. So capacity is another big factor in, in what's going on. More information on alternators, battery charging, power management, and CE Niehoff can be found by visiting Fleet Maintenance Magazine online. Thank you for tuning in to VSP News from Coleman's Corner. I am your host, David A. Coleman, editor of Fleet Maintenance Magazine, the only publication that is all maintenance, all management, all vehicle classes, all the time. Until our next broadcast, keep up to date on what is happening in our industry by visiting Fleet Maintenance Magazine online.